the School of Salamanca contemplated transcendental themes that we still think about today, such as human rights, politics, and economics. They also debated private property and other topics related to modern life thanks to their interests in events like the Protestant Reformation, the discovery of the New World, and the practice of monetary manipulation by the Spanish Habsburgs. The School of Salamanca is a group of intellectuals, mostly Jesuits and Dominicans, although some of them even lay people, from the 16th century, from Spain and Portugal, also some members uh, from the New World, um, who were rethinking their own classical sources, rethinking their biblical sources, uh, basically participating in the Renaissance, but uh, on the other side of the Reformation. So these are principally Portuguese and Spaniards, uh, and they tend to be characterized as Aristotelian and Aquinan in their methodology. My name is Eric Clifford Graff. I was born in Dallas, Texas a long time ago. Uh, I went to the University of Virginia where I studied Spanish, history, and pre-med. I fell in love with the Spanish language, um, and basically I stayed at the University of Virginia until I got my doctorate at one of the best uh, graduate programs in the world. But I teach at the University of Francisco Marroquin now. Uh, it's a fascinating place. Most of my students are interested in politics and economics, so I have to be as well, and we are teaching each other. Uh, a lot of interesting things. As an English speaker, it's important to realize that uh, the English-speaking world did not invent classical liberalism in a vacuum. There were precursor ideas. Uh, many of these thinkers, uh, classical liberals like Locke, Jefferson, uh, the Frenchman, Bastiat, were all uh, students in many ways of the School of Salamanca. They were reading these uh, Hispanic, proto-liberal thinkers. And I think that brings humility to the study of history. It also accentuates the idea that these ideas are universal. They don't belong to any particular linguistic, ethnic, or racial group. And it's also fascinating. I am a specialist in Cervantes, so I'm much more interested in the intellectual history of 16th century Spain than anywhere else. This course uh, is um, a massive open online course. Uh, the methodology uh, is uh, asynchronic, uh, meaning students can take the course at their own leisure, at their own rhythm. Uh, they can take the course in any order they want. It's recommended to take the introduction, then the three chapters, and then the conclusion, but you can always go back and revisit each chapter, each video. Uh, I view this course as either an appendix or a prelude to the Quixote. It gives you the intellectual context within which to really understand everything from the tropes, the metaphors, to the jokes, to the illusions, in Don Quixote. Now, I have colleagues in politics and economics who are pretty convinced that the School of Salamanca is the big kahuna that we should all be studying, and that Don Quixote is an appendix, is an example of creative literature that comes out of the School of Salamanca. I don't like that interpretation as much because I'm a student of the novel, but these two fields of study, the School of Salamanca, this historical category, and the first modern novel, are, are complementary. These two courses really do um, complement each other. This course is for anyone who wants to learn um, about the intellectual context of the Spanish Golden Age. Uh, I could also imagine that this course is also aimed at students of politics and economics in particular, uh, people who want to learn about the Hispanic origins of those two fields. Uh, traditionally, we read a lot about Adam Smith and perhaps Thomas Jefferson, uh, but we don't necessarily go back to Victoria and Mariana. I could imagine a student of politics at a university in the United States who's also interested in Spanish and wants to, in particular, learn more about the terminology of their particular field of interest, and this course would be ideal for them. And vice versa, anyone who's a Spanish speaker and who's interested in politics, economics, human rights, might take this course in English. Um, 
to better their career. So it actually has a pragmatic component to it. We have animation, we have comic strips, we have online sessions, we have uh, a series of lectures that are uh, entertaining and I think uh, brief enough and direct enough to maintain your attention. Uh, we also have uh, quizzes and we offer certification.